All right, just a relatively quickly a video tonight. I already had it recorded. It was a nice, well thought out video, but then I answered my own question after doing a tiny little bit of homework. Uh, so when you find a vinyl record at the Goodwill bins, and just right as you grab it, they're taking away the entire row to put out another one. I'm like, oh no, what do I do? And I, you know, carefully looking around for other records while they're taking these away. And I threw in my card and I said, you know what? This is the only record of the entire store. It happened to be the only record in the store for the entire night. And, well, anyway, one of my friends said it was Kaka, not to be gross or anything. And he mentioned that numerous times. And I said, well, it was $1.29, so what can I do? I've got the what you just said it was, and you don't, so bye-bye. And that's what happened. So I purchased this vinyl record. It's a 12-inch, which does nothing for anybody in the record community. They just told me to go away. I said, 12 inches, you better just move on and do something else with your life. Because we don't collect 45s, we don't collect you know 12 inches sort of thing yuck but I'll show you what this is and I will explain to you what this is it's in a plastic sleeve here and this is Don Penn um, if you don't love me right here on this side here and then it has um, changing faces I got somebody else on the back of it turns out that this is like a reggae uh, type of record here a very slow dance reggae type thing here from 1994 on Atlantic and Big Beat and it's got a cool Atlantic sleeve there unfortunately it's got you know some rotation tape on there you know somebody and then there's the promo label and it was $4.99 somewhere so when this was uh, sold for $4.99 that I don't know but it's got a very interesting backstory with this and I'll tell you about that and I'll show you the label first and I'll have pictures of these things in the end of the video. Thank you for opting to receive decommissioned LPs from the Strictly Vinyl era 2006 to 2018 at Moloco. Most of these albums served in our establishment for over a decade on heavy rotation. All selections come with extra snaps and pops worn into the grooves by thousands and thousands of feelings. So, I did not know what that is. There's a band called Maloko. Uh, there's some place in Russia called Maloko. And I was going cuckoo for Maloko and I just couldn't find anything. Then I typed in Maloko 2006-2018. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But then when I hit, um, when I typed in uh, Maloko and Strictly Vinyl, I found a website um, with some different DJ information and Maloko is actually a restaurant slash bar uh, with some sort of, somebody said it was a clockwork orange type of theme uh, with neon this and neon that and a uh, twist of modern decor and stuff like that and it's a place in Portland, Oregon. Um, so that's what that was. So at one point they had live uh, DJ, uh, they, I think they still do, but they were using vinyl records at this particular point in time and that's one of those. And and so I guess they decided to um, sell them off um, for five dollars a piece right there. And this Don Pen is worth only about five dollars on Discogs. But it's just kind of an interesting little bit of Portland, Oregon history with that label on there. And that's pretty much all the story there is to that. I might show you a picture of Maloko. I don't know. See, and then I'll show you a picture of that web page that I found. A little bit of information there. And there was like a, a DJ that is strictly vinyl um, on. On, I don't remember what day this was or whatever and they played lots of dance hall and reggae type stuff so that would make very much sense there it took me a long time to figure out this I said a long time but five or six seven tries because uh, Don Penn you don't love me is on tons and tons of different label variations tons I mean you go to this particular music video you don't love me and it's got 59 million views it doesn't do much for me but I just thought it was kind of interesting here. While I'm here, I'm going to do a couple other things here. I'll show you some other really neat things that I picked up here. I got another piece of more or less local history, and this is out of Salem, Oregon, um, and this is the Pentacle Theater, and um, they're a local, um, they're out of West Salem or somewhere, and uh, something's afoot. Uh, from the Pentacle Theater. So it was an old um, handbill or flyer slash poster type thing, whatever you want to call it. It's got all tack holes in it. And it's from 1988. I think something is afoot um, is a um, 
uh, Agatha Christie title there, and you can see all the different things there, the little weapons and ropes and poisons and stuff like that. And a little guy right there that looks like Paul Rubens. I am not exactly sure what is that doing on there. I guess you could get killed by Paul Rubens. I don't know. Um, but this poster has got some sort of uh, David McDonald did that one in 1987, and this came out in 1988. So kind of interesting there. It doesn't have a ton of value, but it's got some local history. The Pentacle Theater is still there, and they have that same exact logo. I used to drive by it all the time. And then these came with it, which are interesting. Again, I buy these things to research you know for future use or or give these things away if i turn out that i don't want them or i got about four of these prints here one two three four there were like five of them i could not find a copy of this um but this is a california artist phil dinan and there's there's a cat there and i think he's got two kids and three wives or he had he's been married three times and has two kids i don't know that was what um, Wikipedia said there. But yeah, he's a, a, a fairly well-known uh, California artist. This is very, very 80s with the artwork right there. Super, super 80s. Um, and I didn't know, I'm pretty sure this was a print, and it is because all the discolorations outside the edges or whatever um, are actually part of the print there. And that is not a real autograph. That's a printed autograph. But it's possible that he had these printed himself, or I don't really know the backstory of these, but they came with that poster. The record was separate. And another rotation there these came out at the very end of the night with the last last bin and um and that was that was pretty much it um you know um the last bin sometimes turn out to be the best ones because they're very tired they don't have any energy to sort anything and doesn't get sorted and you know, sometimes you'll find a quarter i found a quarter and these things and again artwork doesn't cost a lot of money to purchase and then one other one here so I have four of those. I may frame one, we'll see, and throw it in a corner somewhere. It's nice and cheery. And then this one here is a print of some kind. Um, some sort of golfing print here. Know nothing about this one here. It's very faint and hard to see. Some sort of print sketch type thing here. And it says Meadow I or Meadow 1 Lawrence. And then this is uh, 82 out of 200 or 32 out of 200 right there. So some sort of limited edition thing on some sort of watercolor paper. Very bizarro there. First I thought it was a watercolor, but as some sort of sketch with a little bit of watercolor wash or something on it, I don't really know. But again, this is a, some, uh, there was an edition of 200. So what this is and why it's, why it's even existence is, is important, I don't know. Finding out who Lawrence is, is exceedingly important, um, difficult and then meadow i or meadow one i don't know maybe that refers to the iron there i really know if anybody knows anything about that one there but again this video is basically about that strange record there and it's interesting because um I used to find lots and lots of local history at this particular Goodwill spot there. I found like a piece of floor that was like, um, had like a heat and stamped impression into it or something like that. And it was from the famous Elsinore Theater, which is local here. I've got a little block of, of the original stage and they must have done some, they either replaced the stage or they, you know, or they just took out, you know, uh, damaged planks of the stage and you donated some money and you got a piece of the stage, you know, to some Somebody outside of the Salem, Oregon area, that is worth nothing. To some people in this particular area, they will either pay a lot or they will like say, geez, this guy wants $50 for like a couple of in five inches piece of, of flooring from some theater that like homeless people sleep out in the front of now. Ridiculous. And that's exactly how it is. But I'm preserving history for the next person. And again, Phil Dynan is a is a um is a a noted artist that has a Wikipedia page. But I could not find this image through Google Images at all. And uh, the items for sale on eBay were not anywhere close to that. So no clue. But it was a fun little trip there. Mostly it was all business stuff. Tons of packing tape and business envelopes and bubble wrap and so that it just all went on my business card because they're not going to really care about a couple of prints there but it was a really successful trip hope you enjoyed this video and like one more look at that uh record that my friend said it was junk but there is this one here and what's interesting about this one this probably did not get a lot of rotation because it is very very clean i mean it looks like it had maybe one rotation or none that's really basically all there is somebody didn't grab
have this one, but it's got 59 million views of the video on YouTube um, for that particular video. And there's that one there. So I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you for watching.